As we start looking at and studying derivatives, we notice that when we take a derivative of a function, we get a different function, which might beg the question, can we take the derivative of the derivative? That's what we're going to look at today. What are derivatives of derivatives? And these derivatives of derivatives are actually very useful to us in calculus to understand different parts of the function and how it behaves. We call these things higher ordered derivatives. For example, if f of x was equal to x to the fifth minus x cubed plus x plus 6, we know we can take the derivative f prime of x using the power rule to be 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 1. But since this is just another polynomial, I could take the derivative of this derivative. We call this the second derivative, which is denoted f prime prime, the second derivative, which using our exponent rule would become 20x cubed minus 6x. In fact, why stop there? We can take a third derivative, f prime prime of x, which would then be 60x squared minus 6. After the third derivative, we change the notation slightly and just do a superscript in parentheses to indicate the number of derivatives that we've taken. So the fourth derivative here, bringing the 2 out front, is 120x. And we can keep going to find the fifth derivative of f, which is just 120. And finally, ultimately, we end up with a sixth derivative of x, which is just 0. So in this way, we can keep taking derivatives of the derivatives to get another derivative. Let's try another example where we take lots of derivatives. Um, let's just do two derivatives using our quotient rule on f of x equals x cubed plus 3 over x squared. Well, the first derivative using our quotient rule, just like we did in the previous video, was we would take the derivative of the top, which is 3x squared, times the bottom, which is just x squared, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, times the top, which is x cubed plus 3, all over the bottom squared. So x squared gets squared again. Let's do a little cleanup on this. We have 3x to the fourth by adding the exponents, minus 2x to the fourth, minus 6x all over the denominator of x to the fourth by multiplying the exponents. And so if we combine the like terms, we end up with 1x to the fourth minus 6x over x to the fourth. Well. If that's the first derivative, the second derivative would be the derivative of our answer, which is also a quotient. So we'll use the quotient rule and take the derivative of the top, which is 4x cubed minus 6 times the bottom, which is x to the fourth, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 4x cubed times the top, which is x to the fourth minus 6x all over the denominator squared, x to the fourth squared. Let's simplify this to see what we end up with. Distributing the x to the fourth through, we end up with 6 or 4x to the seventh, adding the exponents, minus 6x to the fourth. Distributing the negative 4 through, we get minus 4x to the seventh plus 24x to the fourth all over x to the 4 times 2 is 8. Then we can try and combine like terms. 4x to the seventh minus 4x to the seventh is 0. 
So we end up with negative 6 plus 24 is 18x to the fourth over x to the eighth. And then subtracting the exponents, we end up with our final answer of 18 over x to the fourth power as our second derivative. And then we could keep taking derivatives from there if we wanted to. So taking a higher order derivative is basically two problems nestled into one, where we just keep taking the derivative of our answer until we end up with the higher order derivative that we are looking for. Let's make this b. But what exactly do higher order derivatives tell us? What do they mean? Well, we already know that the first derivative is the rate of change. The second derivative is how the change is changing. For example, if you're driving down the road, you might be going 25 miles per hour. That's your rate of change. That's the derivative. But you also might be speeding up because you're getting onto the freeway. That's the second derivative. That tells us that your speed, the rate of change, is changing. It's speeding up and going faster. Or conversely, if the second derivative is negative, maybe you're driving 25 miles per hour, but you're slowing down coming to a stoplight or a stop sign. The negative slowing down is the second derivative of the derivative, which is the speed or rate of change. So let's take a look at an example where we interpret the second derivative and what it means. Let's start with f of x equals 1 over x, which of course we know to take the derivative of that, we're going to treat it like x to the negative 1. And let's see what's happening at the point x is equal to, let's look at x equals 1. OK, so our first derivative, bringing the negative out front, becomes x to the negative 2, which switching it back to fraction form is negative 1 over x squared. And if I plug the 1 into the derivative, that'll tell me the rate of change at 1, which is negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1 negative 1 over 1 squared, technically. So what this tells me is at the point x equals 1, the graph is decreasing at a rate of 1, 1 y per x. It is decreasing. But it's not going to stay decreasing at that same rate forever. That decreasing is going to change over time. So to see how that decrease is changing, is it decreasing at a faster rate, decreasing at a slower rate, what's happening, we're going to look at the second derivative. Well, the second derivative, bringing the negative 2 out front, gives us negative 2x to the negative 3, which is, neg which is positive 2 over x cubed. So our second derivative at our point of 1 is 2 over 1 cubed, or 2 divided by 1, which is positive 1. What I notice here, and what's most important to me, is the fact that this is a positive 1, which is the opposite of the first derivative. That means they're working against each other. So yes, it's decreasing. But that decrease is slowing down, because the second derivative has the opposite sign. So it might be decreasing pretty quick at first, and it's going to slow down and level off. Still decreasing, maybe, but leveling off. The decrease is slowing down. And that's what the second derivative tells me, is that the decrease is slowing. 
because the first and second derivative have opposite signs. They work against each other. The change is slowing down. Let's try another example. Let's take a look at the function f of x equals 2x cubed. And let's look at the point x equals 2. Let's see what's happening at 2. Well, the first derivative we know is 6x squared. And to figure out what's happening at 2 in the first derivative, that's going to tell us the rate of change in the function. 6 times 2 squared is 6 times 4, or 24. So we are, because it's positive, increasing at a rate of 24. But is that increase getting faster, or is it slowing down? The second derivative tells us how the change is changing. So the second derivative is 12x. Plugging 2 in there, 12 times 2 is 24. But again, what we really care about is the sign. Both derivatives, the first and second derivative, are the same, which means they're complementing each other. They're pushing each other. They're encouraging each other to make a more dramatic change over time. That second derivative tells us that the increase is getting faster. Because they're both going the same direction, it's going to be getting faster. In other words, it is increasing, but that increase is going to become sharper and sharper and a more dramatic increase over time. Let's try one more. Let's try f of x equals negative 4x squared. And let's look at x equals 3. Well, the first derivative at 3 is going to be negative 8x. So to see how the graph is changing at 3, we put 3 in, and we get negative 8 times 3, which is negative 24. Because it's negative, I know this graph is decreasing at a rate of 3. But is that increase getting faster or slowing down? Well, let's find out by looking at the second derivative. Does it go in the same direction and complement it? Or does it go in the opposite direction and pull against it? Well, the second derivative is negative 8. And it doesn't really matter what we have for our input. It's always going to be negative 8. And what's important to us is they both have the same sign. That means they're both going to complement each other, pushing each other on, making the decrease getting faster. In other words, this graph is starting to decrease, and it's going to be getting faster over time and steeper and steeper. Because both derivatives have the same sign, the change becomes more dramatic. If they have different signs, like in our first example, the change becomes less dramatic until possibly it changes direction completely. So that's our higher order derivatives. We're just taking derivatives of derivatives, taking a look at measuring not just the change of the function, but how fast is the change changing. Take a look at practicing some of these in the homework assignment. Come to class with questions, and we'll talk about some applications and further uses of these higher order derivatives. We'll see you then.